Hello, this is Nathan, and welcome to a specific guide to Door Fortress. In this video, I'm aiming to show off barracks, squads, how to equip them, and maybe a little bit of details with squads, and that kind of matter. I basically want to get your uh, feet wet, nice foundation, that way you can have a uh, equipped squad who is trained and ready for battle. I won't be going over the archery range and those units, Look forward to that in a different video. So for this video, I am going to be going over everything basically from start to finish. So there are going to be some things I've already made, uh, but essentially everything else is like if I've never even touched the barracks. So one thing, if you have not already, make sure you have like a leather worker and then something to make armor and weapons. There's a lot of different ways you can do that. You can go to, uh, you can make training weapons, you can make real weapons, and that kind of uh, thing. What I'm going to be doing is I've already made a work order to smelt iron bars. I have a lot. So the first thing I want to do is create uh, some equipment for my squad members. I am only going to be uh, showing off how to... Well, I guess I could show how to get two people on a squad, but we are only going to be decking out one of them. So let's do that. So let's make some work orders. I like to do that so that way, if I don't have something, they'll keep attempting to make it every time they, you know, look at the work order, if it's complete or not. So uh, let's do that. So for this one, we're going to do the armor first. So I'm going to look for an iron helm. Now, if you're not familiar with what kind of armor there is, oops, we do want one. There we go. Now, if you're not familiar, you can always go to tasks, armor, click a specific material. And there you go. They're showing everything that they can make. What we're going to be making is a breastplate, a helm, gauntlet, grease, eye boot, and a shield for the armor. Do that, not the glass furnace. Let's do iron grease. Gauntlet. Eye boot. And uh, let's see, uh, breastplate. There we go. And then a shield. And I want to say that's everything. Of course, we want to change this to one. And I don't know why it keeps going to infinity. Clicking the wrong number here. There we go. All right. So we got one of everything. Another thing I want to do is make a weapon. For this example, I'm going to be making battle axes. That way we kind of have like an axe squad. Uh, let's do iron battle axe. Okay. So we're going to wait for these guys to be made. I am going to specify someone to be making these. Uh, the reason being, I have someone here uh, in my fortress named Smithy. I gave them a nickname. They're a legendary weaponsmith. So make sure if you guys have somebody in your fortress that is good at making armor or weapons, that kind of thing, that you do that. Um, so if you go to workers tab and designate, this, these workers will only be working in these workshops. Uh, another quick little tip here, if you don't know if you have a legendary something, their names will be flashing in color. Uh, if you do, if they have that, that means they're legendary in a skill. So just kind of, just a little tip for you guys, I guess. All right. So now we have the weapons uh, and the armor being made. Now we need to make something else. I'll show you guys how I know what everything they need a little bit later, but this is just to kind of get ready while I do other things. So another thing that they need to make is a leather uh, backpack and a water skin. That way they have alcohol on them all the time and a meal. There we go. All right, there we go. Just one to one. There we go. So let's start making the barracks area. So another tip, uh, for example, my fortress, let's go actually go to the entrance. This is the main entrance. They go down a few ways 
They come over this long hallway and then this uh, staircase, uh, stairwell, whatever you want to call it, is what goes to each of my levels where the dwarves pretty much inhabit. Um, that way, if I want, I can make traps here. I can do all sorts of things and enemies just don't have quick access. So with that said, I want to make my barracks, you know, where they're going to be training and stuff, pretty close to this section. So I'm actually going to go down one level from that, go to my farm section, and we're just going to make a little area over here on the right. So the first area I'm going to make is where the dwarfs are going to be training at. And then I'm going to make a barracks for them. Or they're both going to be barracks. One of, one of them is going to be where they sleep. The other one is where they're going to train. I really don't want training dwarves interacting with sleeping dwarves. It's probably not a big deal, but sometimes they get a little bit feisty and can um, get others in their wrestling match. Uh, when dwarves train, they will wrestle and uh, they won't try to hurt each other, but sometimes they can uh, include others in that brawl, so to speak. So, And I also just like it um, aesthetically to keep things separate. So they're going to be making that. One thing that I know in advance, each dwarf will need its own bed and they will also need a cabinet and a chest. That way they can store their equipment for the military and also they can store their own personal belongings in the other one. Another thing you can include in these are armor stands and weapon stands. But as of right now, at least from my understanding, they're bugged and they don't really are used for anything. So. Let's make our chest here. So we're going to make a coffer. We're going to make a cabinet. And then we're going to make a bed. And that's pretty much all they need. So let's kind of click play here. Get this stuff going. And as soon as this is mined out, I'm going to start creating the zone for it. So that way you guys can see uh, what's required or what's needed. I am going to be pretty much ignoring these notifications. Uh, we should be getting a trading thing here soon. So we're just going to ignore that. There we go. Okay, so that is all done. So let's put down our zones here. So of course, Z for zone. Uh, it's also this guy down here. We want to go to barracks and we're actually going to put two different ones and you'll see why. We're going to accept that one. And then we're going to make our other one. Okay, so let's let's actually go to them. So this guy is going to be, we'll say training barracks. And then for this guy, we'll say sleeping barracks. I know, very creative names, but it's to the point, right? Okay, so we've got that. And if you're familiar with zones, uh, you know that you can kind of press on these guys to get more specific details. We don't need to do anything with this like shield, but we do need to click on this. Choose which squads will use the barracks. When we click on it, we can see, uh, you know, select how squads will use this space, but it's completely empty. Not really telling you a good reason why it's happening, but it's because we don't have any squads set up. So let me do that again. So down here, normally it's Q. For me, it's actually the C button. Um, but if you click on this, it'll open up your squad's sidebar. Now, when you click on it, it says you must appoint a militia commander to create a squad. So I haven't done that yet. So it's telling you what it needs to do. So we need to go into the nobles and administrators section. And then we need to uh, uh, appoint a, mission, a militia commander. Right, so let's click on it. I don't have a lot of dwarves in my fortress, so there's not really anybody with relevant skills. You you want to get someone who's like a good leader, who's good at teaching, uh, who's good at their skill, but it's not really required. They will practice all these skills as they're in the position. So for my best suggestion, get somebody who's either really good at military or get someone who doesn't have a lot of... Um, need in the fortress. So for an example, I wouldn't want to get my smithy as the militia commander because they're most likely going to be training all the time and won't have time to actually make uh, weapons and stuff. I mean, they are my legendary 
uh, smithy, my weapon smith. So just for this example, I am going to pick um, my... Uh, we're just going to do this person. They're a performer, but they're actually the person that cuts down trees as well. So they should be decent at an axe already. So as soon as we uh, select them, they're good to go. So let's go back to squads. We're going to create a new squad. And then right out of the gate, it's going to ask you what kind of armor you want to do. Now, some of these are, you know, if you want something quick and dirty, go ahead and select one of them. I don't want to do that. I want to spe uh, specify what they're wearing. So we're going to say no uniform for now. So let's go over some of these options before we get really into it. I'm actually going to make this play. So the first option, you can create symbols um, or specify a symbol and then change like the background and the symbol color. So kind of neat. That way, if you guys have like more than one squad, you know what what is what. Um, so this uh, person here that they show, if you click on it, it zooms to them. Let's actually go back to my barracks here. Um, this one, if we click on this, we can see everybody in this position. We can also uh, do the name of the squad. I believe this is the name. Sometimes Door Fortress has multiple names, but uh, so for example, we'll say um, Axe. We'll just call them the Axe Squad. All right, so Axe Squad. Um, and then you, of course, you can do their, I guess like their Dwarven name, like their official Dwarven name. The Mountainous Post works for me. And then the, the last thing you can do here, besides obviously create new squad, you can check mark this guy. Actually, I take that back. Let me see something. Okay, good. You can't do anything really else. Uh, you can specify certain dwarfs here to give commands, but let's go back to squads here. If we click on this, we're check marking the entire squad here. Then if we go down here, we can see certain orders. This is a kill order. If we click on it and then click on... Uh, a certain animal. Here, I'm going to see if we even have any. Uh, there's a there's a tame rabbit, some yak cows, some ravens, which we can't do. Uh, but essentially, you just click that, and then you click on what you want them to kill, and they're going to go and kill it. Uh, we've got a station order, so you assign them uh, a spot. If any enemies come by them, they will attack. Patrolling, pretty self-explanatory. Give them specific walking points and they will patrol that area. Uh, burrow defense. Now this one I'm not going to go over in great detail. But for burrows, um, you can create a specific area where certain dwarves can go through. And then you can specify uh, them to defend a certain burrow. And then of course we have a training order which I think it's just giving them a straight uh, command to train. I don't really like doing it that way. So we'll just cancel an order. And as, as you can see, when I clicked on that, it's changing. Uh, one thing, do not click on this unless you really mean to. Some people will try to like click on this too fast, thinking maybe it's to get out of the, the window button. Uh, it will delete the squad. And it's, it's a pain in the butt to set up again if you have a nice list of dwarves here. But anyway, let's get to something a little more interesting. So if we click equip, we can see that our current dwarf only has two things that they're needing because we said no uniform is a water skin and a backpack. The backpack, so it's yellow because it's available in the fortress, but they haven't equipped it yet. So they're probably in the middle of trying to equip it, depending on what kind of order you're giving them, which I will go over. But in this case, we want to specify what kind of uniform they're doing. So we're going to do add uniform. I'm going to say axe uniform. Well, actually, let's do a little bit more specific. Iron axe uniform. Okay. And then this is where we can tell, uh, you know, we can save a uniform template, essentially. So we're going to do new body wear. We're going to do a breastplate because that's what we're making. And essentially, that's what we're copying here. So helm. Uh, we're making grease, we're making gauntlets, we are making high boots, we are making a shield, and we are making a battle axe. So we've got our uh, items here, but 
They've got to be a specific material since that's what we're doing. I don't want them to just grab whatever. So if, if we click on matte, we can say what it's made out of. Now, if you just want them to have any old metal, you can click on it or you can specify. So that you can get pretty specific, which is nice. And then as you're doing this, it's updating here on the left. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, where is the iron at? There it is. And battle axe iron. So just as a tip, just so you guys are aware, for the different tiers of uh, materials you can make things out of, I'm not really familiar with wood. You definitely don't want to be making a material out of that. It's pretty weak. Uh, but the tiers are uh, leather slash bone. So for like armor. Um, and then it goes, I want to say it's, Hmm, I don't really remember. I think I want to say it's copper, then maybe silver, but I'm not sure. I think copper is the worst metal. Um, and then it might go iron. I'm so sorry. I'm trying to remember the tiers. It's been a while since I've cared. Uh, I think it's copper, maybe bronze, iron, then steel. Silver um, might be good at edged weapons and such. Uh, it depends on the material that they're making. Silver also may be as good as copper or bronze. Correct me if I'm wrong, if someone else knows, but essentially, um, if you have iron, make it out of that. If you can make steel, please do it out of that. But the best material is adamantine. Uh, this is very hard to get, so unless you're well into your fortress, I wouldn't even bother with this. Um, but it does matter what kind of material you're making because certain material has um, uh, bending uh, points, you know, uh, fracture points. So uh, that way, if you're getting striked with a like a sword versus a hammer, it could have different material um, or it could have different effects with, depending on the material. Same thing with your weapons. The harder, stronger, I mean, not stronger, the, the heavier metals... Um, and I don't really remember what those might be. I don't really see them here. Because there are ways to create weapons that aren't here. Um, it's when your dwarf gets in a mood. But anyway, the heavier the material for blunt weapons, the better. And uh, for edged weapons like swords and axes, you just want to do steel as the best. Um, of course, adamantine, but steel, you cannot go wrong. So... The wiki is also really good at uh, telling you what each one's its benefits and negatives. Uh, but if you go with iron as your first go, it's a pretty good bet that you're good to go. Otherwise, try to get steel. But anyway, one of the last things that I like to do with this is these options down here. So I have trouble with uniform worn over clothing because, you know, dwarves can wear socks, shirts, that kind of thing. And this stuff can go over them but they start running into problems with their boots. Uh, for some reason, they just won't replace their boot with an iron high boot. Uh, they just won't equip it, at least from my experience. So what I like to do is say uniform replaces clothing. So that way they're only wearing this stuff. I mean, there's not really a need to wear the other things. This will protect them from head to toe. And another thing I do is click on this to change it to exact matches only. I only want them to wear this specific type of armor since, you know, that's what I'm telling them to do. So uh, we're going to confirm and save it. And then we're going to click, you know, this guy's already uh, selected here. We're going to say assign uniform and we'll do iron axe uniform. Now, right away, you can see that these are all red. These are still yellow. The red means it is not available for them to use. It's not in your fortress, at least as of a right now. Um, so we'll just kind of let it play out. So right now it looks like I have uh, made a helmet, which I think they may not necessarily equip yet. Um, I do want to kind of check on how this stuff is going. Looks like it might be done. Okay, perfect. So let's do that next. Um, so let's go to the zones since we did make this squad. We're going to click on this little plus again. So this is our training barracks. And now we have these icons here. If you had more than one squad, it'd be listed here. And we can specify what they do in this area. 
So we got sleep here, train here. Uh, they can store their individual assigned weapons. And then they can store squad stuff like ammunition and that kind of uh, equipment for squads. Uh, and for this one, since this is just training, we'll highlight this. So they know to train there. Now on the other one, I'm going to say all the other three. Now feel free to customize however you feel uh, like what you like, what works for your fortress. There isn't really a big deal, um, but they are showing images of what you need for each thing here. So if you sign it, they can sleep. Make sure you have a bed. Uh, same thing with the cabinet and the chest. So each dwarf has to have one in the squad. So let's build that stuff. Um, There we go. I was just having a brain fart. Okay, so we're gonna have a bed here. Uh, we'll just do a little foot locker type situation. And then they have a cabinet. We'll just kind of do it next to the bed. All right, so that's perfect for them there. The training, they don't really need anything. They just need a space. Uh, so that's perfect. So one of the last things I wanna do before they get fully equipped I want to tell them to train, but I'm actually going to wait till they finish making this stuff before I do, and you'll see why. Um, at least from my understanding. So right now, they don't have anything equipped. They just know it's available uh, for them to use, but they're not using it. And it looks like she went and equipped it. So you can see that she's naked for the most part, and is slowly finding this stuff to equip. Now, I was I'm actually kind of surprised by this. Uh, she doesn't have a routine set, which I will show in the schedule. Uh, so I'm surprised that they're wearing this right now. Uh, it kind of looks like they're just changing gear a lot. Very interesting. I don't know what she's doing. Huh. It will change once we give her a schedule here. So let me go to my Mithy. We got three things left to make, so it shouldn't be that big of a deal. Let's wait for this to be done, and then we'll continue with explaining the schedule, and uh, we should be able to wrap it up here. Our smithy looks like they're holding a baby as well, so I can't imagine making weapons and stuff and holding a baby is easy, but that's why we have a legendary. They know what they're doing. What else we got? The iron battle axe. So hopefully this will be a good material once it's made. Or, yeah, not too bad. Okay. So we have everything made. Um, I'm not sure where they're storing the armor and stuff. Interesting. Okay. So we did that. Uh, what we're going to do, let me go back to my squad here. So they know that everything is available here, but they don't have it equipped. They're just running around naked. Uh, so to update that, let's do a schedule. So the schedule, this guy's kind of its own beast here. So what we can do is we can do view monthly schedule. We can see uh, all the months here in the current month, and then we can say what they're doing for each month. If you have a squad that is not good, no skills, you want them to be training basically nonstop. So if you just click on here uh, to over here to constant training, uh, this schedule here is already made and they will train all the months. They've got staggered training, which shows that they're off duty, training, off duty, training. That way, if you have someone in the squad and maybe they have a certain job you want them to do during off duty, they will do that. Uh, ready, no orders means they're basically standing around ready for battle. Uh, they won't be doing anything else. And then of course, off duty, they're off duty. So they're not going to be uh, following orders, that kind of thing. So for this one, we're going to be doing training. And then when we come back a screen, so let's do that again. We click on schedule, we can see what they're on right now. Now, you can actually edit these. And you can see all these details. I think this requires its own video. But if you just use the things by themselves, everything should work just fine. 
uh, you can um, rename these orders. You can uh, select it where they're sleeping. Um, and also the equipping, which I actually think is the important one. So let me go back here. We are going to go to here. And I think if I click, hmm, I think up duty. No, we don't want to do that. I think if we edit training, this should work. Let's see. Let's see what happens. So if we'll click edit, uh, equip always. So they're always going to have it equipped. Uh, equip during orders only. I'm going to do equip always. Um, and then we can spe specify where they're sleeping. Let's do sleep barracks at will. I mean, it's not really too big of a deal, but if they can just keep going back and forth and sleeping, that should be pretty good to go. And then, of course, you can specify um, who's training here. So you can select the minimum number of soldiers to follow new order. I know I said I was going to do this in probably another video, but it's not too difficult. Um, so what's the minimum here? Uh, so let's say you had a full squad here. I think it's 10 and you said two. So that means as long as two of these people are training, they're good to go. It doesn't matter what these other guys are doing. I'm going to do this to 10 because I want everybody to train. We'll do, uh, we'll just kind of get out of that because everything was set to how I wanted it. But you can edit each one individually if you want to. So uh, just for your information. So we have them set to training. Um, at least I thought we did. Monthly order. Yeah. Let's see. So she grabbed an axe. We can see that. Yeah, routine. Constant training. So we can see that she got decked out. Uh, if we go to equip, everything's equipped because she's training. But let's go. Which She should be training in this barracks soon. Looks like she keeps equipping the same thing. Oh, she's getting provisions. Soldier no activity. Oh, I don't want to do that. Sorry. <laughs> it looks like they can't decide what they're doing. Okay, they got some meals here. Training session. Go to combat training. Does take them a little bit, it seems like. And then you can see individual combat drill. So they train themselves. Um, if we were to create a new person, so if you click on this little dwarf face, like assign position, you can see, uh, since we did this as a axe uniform, they'll specify in these skills, you know, if they have an axe dwarf skill or not. Uh, that way you get a snapshot of what um, your dwarves might have. Not super important since you can train them. We'll just kind of click the ranger for this example. And as you can see, he's assigned here. Now, if we go to equip, you can see that we don't have anything for him. It looks like there must be another water skin somewhere in this fortress, but we don't have anything else. Um, which is fine. I don't want, I didn't, I didn't make anything for him. Uh, but you can see here, he's here, he's training. Uh, he's doing an individual combat drill. And they're basically, you just leave them as is and they'll start doing their own thing. So they're, he, this guy is leading a striking demonstration and they're watching. So... That's one thing that I was talking about when you're making this. If you make your leader, um, your militia commander or whoever's the leader of the squad, usually you want them to have some kind of combat experience um, or some kind of skills in like, I don't know if this guy has anything. Doesn't look like it, but there's like teacher, uh, watcher, maybe learner. I can't remember. There's a lot of specific ones. Yeah. And they and it would do a better job at teaching things but slowly but surely if you leave them as this as training they will eventually become legendary at their skills and hopefully you can get more dwarves into these squads as you're getting more migrant waves or what have you who can incorporate their own skills because if they are legendary dodgers or something like that they will lead um a training session regarding that and help your dwarves get even stronger. So uh, I, I'm pretty sure that's pretty much it uh, in regards to this military. If I missed anything or if there's anything you want me to cover, please let me know. I am going to make a specific guide to archery 
in how to build that. It should be a little bit of a shorter one. Uh, but let me know if I said any misinformation, especially about the metal tier thing. I'm a little bit rusty on that, but essentially steel is the way to go. So please correct me if I'm wrong on anything. But anyway, I think I'm going to leave it to that. I really appreciate you guys watching if you're here to the end. As always, this is Nathan. Thank you so much for joining me on this adventure. I will see you.